the guru of Squad Double Zero. The assassin like no other. Yes, I'm the best thing about to do. Is here to bring you my first Karoko no Basket. Karoko no Basket greatness discussion video. Now, for those who don't know, I have caught up with, I caught up with Kuroko, um, let's see, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I think about three weeks ago, um, yo man, Kuroko, and I tell people, man, look, look, I never have I been hyped off a chapter once, the Phantom Six Man, dog. the fact is, Kuroko, Tetsuya, Tetsuya Kuroko, okay, Kuroko is my third favorite anime and manga character of all time, currently. Akashi Seijuro is my fourth favorite anime and manga character of all time currently. Yo man, he's, yo, Kuroko man. It was my sixth now, my seventh favorite series, uh, a manga series currently. Uh, I don't watch the anime, just, just letting you know, I don't watch the anime. Uh, but yo, that manga is just pure greatness though. 100%, it, it doesn't get purer than that. And it's on that level. It's on that level of what you think of that One Piece, that Magic out of Labyrinth, Magic, that Toriko, that, that I'll throw in there, the God of High School, uh, Holy Land, uh, Hana Hana, Honda Honda. All that greatness, all that greatness. Now, another series as well. <sighs> what I come here to talk about, I shouldn't have to talk about. Oh, one last point. I will start reviewing uh, the series now that. The Rakuza, I don't know, spo no mean to spoil, but you can, you can, should be able to tell uh, that this video is going to deal with the way the Winter Cup uh, turned out. So, since the Rakuza versus Seven uh, match slash game is over now, uh, now I'll start reviewing the series. I, I didn't want to come in at the end of it and, you know, none of that jazz, right? Plus, I've had other stuff, other videos to do. With all that being said, let me let me get into the bulk and the, the, the top guy here, the subject matter that people seem to have a problem with, mainly because people don't know, don't play basketball, and probably other sports as well. They're saying it's BS, and they're saying ass pull, they're saying all these powers. When they do, first of all, don't understand the very facets of the, the literary things that are going on, either that, and they don't understand sports, so it's a double whammy. Not saying they have no knowledge, but they just don't understand. They don't don't understand what the author's doing, what the manga is doing, right? Mangaka, however you want to say it. First and foremost, let me let me take it back to let's see the first match. The first match in the Winter Cup. Okay, and this all ends up. I have to take it back there. Well, actually, let me talk about the 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 brief the brief look at the series. The build up, I should say, to the Winter Cup. Then, you know, we'll, we'll deal with the Winter Cup. And then, why am I taking this all so you can understand why the Rakuzin versus Seri match made perfect The game made perfect sense. It, as for, for, you know, my knowledge, my ex expertise, I've grown up with the game. I grew up playing it. And I understand. I have a uh, pretty high, to say the least, basketball IQ. And why do I definitely say this? Because it makes up for my, you know, just only decent athleticism. Without my understanding of the game, I would be quite hindered on the court. But since I understand the game, I can play the game at an effective level. Not the highest level, but an effective level nonetheless. Okay? I was about a star in my own right in high school, just, just FYI. Now, I'm not saying that's the biggest thing ever, just just so you know, I'm not that, I'm not that old anyway. <sighs> Taking that over the series, the series has progressed logically. Okay. The, the, we've seen the abilities. Now, I don't know why people all of a sudden seem like they act like they're brand new, seem like they have a problem with the abilities. They're having OP hacks abilities from day one. Ever since we saw uh, Kisei with his copying ability, ever since we saw Midorima, with these crazy shots. You didn't have a problem back then, you shouldn't have a problem now. You saw Aomini couldn't be touched. He had to fucking form the shot. Why are you still reading the series if you have a problem with what's been presented? He's the ace, Aomini. Aomini's an offensive juggernaut. He doesn't even practice. He doesn't need to practice. This dude just gets buckets and he plays phenomenal defense. And the fact that his stamina doesn't run out. Um, now, 
the only limit to the generation of miracles, and thus those on their level, like the uncrowned kings, means that the bodies are not fully developed, means that they can't, you know, be at their peak, at their maximum, okay? And also understand that there's probably other characters further along, down the line, whether in international play or in professional basketball, that are going to be on their level. That's the way the, the author obviously has set it up. The man mangaka has set it up. Okay, besides those three, we have Moroski Barra. Now we see this dude. He's a fucking defensive juggernaut. It's hard as hell to score on him. And of course, we have Akashi with his, with his ability. Okay? With, with his emperor's eye. Now, you can't call Beers no, no plot holes because this has clearly been foreshadowed. We got the whole Taiko arc. One of the greatest flashback arcs ever. Probably one of, yeah, 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 I would argue one of the greatest arcs ever. That's why I love, part of the reason why I love flashback arcs, because it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. We saw the budding, the emergence of the Generation of Miracles, along with Kuroko, no along with Kuroko. You didn't have a problem with what Kuroko was pulling off? They couldn't find him, they couldn't see him. All the powers and abilities have been explained from day one. If this was Yoshihiro Takahashi, people would be fearing guys like, Oh, he's such a genius. If this was Berserk, Miori. <gasps> foaming at the mouth. You know what I'll say is factual because you see it all the time. At least I do. This is what I observe on the daily. But no, 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 the Winter Cup, I've been calling all along. I, I don't. Really? What, what did you expect? When you have the, common, the collection, the combination, the culmination of the best players in the nation. Of the generation miracles. What the hell did you expect? You saw Kagami, this crazy rapid evolution rate, which was highlighted and foreshadowed in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. The first three chapters, it was clearly shown clearly perceive that Kagami's evolution could possibly surpass the Generation of Miracles, at least compete. He had to be able to compete. He's the ace of the team. Not just that he's the ace of the team, he's the light to Kuroko's shadow, and Kuroko was on Takeo's middle school alongside the Generation of Miracles. Kuroko Grade 8 approved him. The Generation of Miracles Grade 8 approved him. Akashi said you agree approves him. You want the Generation of Miracles to be on this such a lead level. It doesn't work like that because that's what you call balance and power scaling. That's why One Piece does it. Toriko does it. Mad Dog the Labyrinth of Magic. Okay. Hunter Hunter does it. That's what you're supposed to do. Other series do it. Dragon Ball does it. Mm, not the greatest, but it did it for most of the series. You understand? It, it, it's like it's like people be forget details. People be acting like they forget the series. And maybe you need to go back and read the earlier chapters. I've read it recently, so it's not BS to me by any means. Maybe it's been too long since you read chapter one. Go go back and maybe maybe scan over some of this early stuff. Cause Kagami clearly was sad to be able to do this craziness from the beginning of the series. I'm not I'm not presenting anything other than facts. And it's not like Kagami can do everything. You should be getting mad at Aomini then. Because Aomini's offensive game is almost limitless. I say almost because nobody's omnipotent. But it's almost limitless and almost un it's near unstoppable. Key says freaking copy, yo. No, no, I'm talking about the perfect copy. I'm just talking about his copying abilities. I'm like, come on, but what? Come on, people. Minorima! You know how hard it is to stop that shot? Stop. Moroski Ball, the thunder slam. He brings it. He brings down a he brings down the rim in the back wall. That's what Shaq Daryl Dark is. That's the grown man power. He's 15 years old, 16 years old, man. He's a freshman in high school. Out of here. Of course there's some some exaggerated fantasy at, uh, attributes, but it's explained. It's, it's logical, given the series. People ain't hitting half-court shots like they nothing. 
you ain't hitting shot. I mean, high schools just don't have the power to dog on shoot from three fourths of the court. Don't have the upper body strength. It's not. It's not accurate. I mean, the argument puts on is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. But it makes sense because the way the manga cut has presented throughout the series. You go to to the summer league or the you know the summer night the national tournament. Clearly shown that everybody evolved. Now we're here at the winter cup. The, the, the finals where all the best teams gather. All the hard work, all the grind, the blood, sweat, and tears they poured in. Of course, they will be massively improved. Plus, it's 200 some, it's 250 plus chapters into the series in certain cases. But, anyways, you know, now we're talking about the final match. Right? Tao Academy versus Serenheim. Tao. Oh, I shouldn't say Teo. Toho Academy versus Serenheim. Okay. Setting. With Toho, you had the, the, the glasses dude who was highly intelligent, who, who was as an assassin. This dude was, oh, he just understand. This dude knew the game. He knows it very well. Senior, right? And you had the ace A.O. Mini. You know what I mean? Them two together were just devastating. They were absolutely devastating. Sarah and Barry survived because they were such an offensive fire. Their offensive firepower was bad greater than Saren's offensive firepower, which they excel in. That, that's their strong suit. It ain't mean they can't play defense, but they're an offensive powerhouse knowing that they're running gun. But Toto was even better. So, what it comes down to is who gets like, more defensive stops, who plays better down the stretch. I mean, it's clear that Ace A. Omini. He outplayed Kagami. Even with Kagami in the zone, Aomina could go in the zone too. Aomina could force himself in the zone, understood the zone. Kagami had stamina issues. This has been shown time and time again. He, yes, he can do the meteor jam, but Ka uh, Aomina has a better game. This is, this is factual. It's just that Saren as a team compensated because not only do you have Krogan on basket who played alongside the Generation Miracles, you have Kagami who's on the level, the level I should say, of the Generation Miracles, but you also have an Uncrowned King which is also on the level of the Generation of Miracles. And freaking Kiyoshi Tepe, and it doesn't matter that Kiyoshi or Tepe, whatever you want to say, was injured. This dude is an Uncrowned King. He could play. It's not like he was crippled in his leg. He can still play, he's just injured. There's plenty of dudes who play injured. That's basketball, that's sports, that's life. Okay? So, so, so realize you have Kuroko, the Phantom Six Man. You have Kagami, Taiga, who is Generation of Miracles level, clearly. And the first person to enter deeper into the zone, by the way, into the second level of the zone, and, which I will get to later, and you have Kiyoshi. Who is an uncrowned king, which Nebuya clearly stated in the Rakuzen map, in Rakuzen game, to the other uncrowned kings. Remember, it doesn't matter that he's injured, he's an uncrowned king, who would have been the Generation Miracles if not for the Generation Miracles. People, have you forgotten? Now, we move on to what was it? The match where they played the other the uncrowned king, the Kai Kawasaki Diamond or something like that, the bad boy. That's all. That's all I remember. Bad boy with the web. It was entrapping. We were getting their behinds beat, but they learned how to beat it through through real power, with, through strategy of, of Rico Aida. She's she's her level of intellect in the game is phenomenal. Okay, they they know how to use players. Uh, you you also have Hugo Jumpe, who I believe. All right, here here's the tiers I got. You got the Generation of Miracles levels, which is the Generation of Miracles, the Uncrowned Kings, and the uh, in some translation the Crown Kings, but the Uncrowned Kings and Kagami. Then a the level below that I have uh, Tatsuya, uh, Kagami's brother, older brother, uh, quote unquote, uh, and, and Kuroko because of Kuroko's specification. He he's not quite. You know, his overall game ain't quite there, but, you know, because of his skill set, he's on uh, Tatsuya's level. Then I have right below them, near them, uh, I shouldn't say right below, but near you got a guy like Hugo Jumper, okay? Hugo, Hugo's on the team too, and you got a dude with the skill set, the EUI of uh, Aizawa, I think it's Aizawa, if I'm not mistaken. 
You got five skilled, play, very skilled players. Okay? And you got, what's his name, homeboy, who's the center? Who's legit, too? Damn it. I don't know if he's on jumpy. I don't think he's on Hugo's level. Well, actually, no, he's probably on Hugo's level. He's, he's not better than Hugo, but he's on Hugo's level. They got some great players on that squad. You got, like, Sarians about squads. When they were blowing out teams, they blew out teams, yo. When they came back fully reloaded, loaded like 45, they were full blown blowing out teams like the Generation of Miracle squads were. They even wrecked one of the, uh, one of the kings of the West. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. You know, I'm trying to remember. Did they play Midorima? No, I don't believe they played. Uh, was it was it Kise then Morosky Bar? I remember they played Morosky Bar and they played Yozen. Yo, Yozen high. Yozen versus Sarah. That was that was a pretty well that was a pretty well executed match. I mean, Morosky Bar. You we saw his person. Now, if Murawski Ball would have played at full strength the entire game, Saren's losing that game. But the dude wanted to, you know, do what he does and be lazy and all this. That's on him. That's on the place. That's the fact that the coach allowed that stuff to happen. That's part of the game, man. He, he didn't take it serious, and then he got serious. Ladies and gentlemen, he entered the zone at the last minute. And, and let me give a clarification on this whole zone fact. There are two portions to the game. Now people go, oh, but the, the love of the game. It makes sense. Because you just, you, one just doesn't enter into the zone. If you don't love something, you're not going to throw your all in there. That's number one. That's that's pure factual. You're not going to be passionate. You're not going to, you know, you're going to limit yourself. Whether mentally or phys and or physically. And then there's emotional, possibly spiritual as well. Okay. But... The, the, the very the clear criteria is clearly stated and why Tatsuya can't enter that level uh, and probably why Kuroko unless Kuroko somehow gets to the Generation of Miracles level which is very highly possible unless you are Generation of Miracles level which includes the Generation of Miracles the Young Crown Kings guys like Kagami unless you're on that level you cannot enter the zone this was clearly stated that not all anybody can just enter the zone. This is what the manga stated. If you want to deny the manga, if you want to deny the facts of the case, then, then there's no reason we should be talking. No, no discussion here because you're spitting on factual stuff. You're, you're going against the manga itself. Okay? With that being said, so Tatsuya and, and a lot of these cats cannot enter the zone. So that just eliminates a lot of dudes. That eliminates a lot of these chit chat, chit chat. So which means there's a possibility of anybody with the generation of miracles entering the zone. Now as far as Morosky Bar not being able to jump, I've lived it. There's something called fatigue, ladies and gentlemen, fatigue, which Kagami clearly was experiencing multiple times throughout this Winter Cup, which people want to just deny that. Oh, but you do. I'll get to it later. To later point people try to make that it's not factual regardless Morosky Baller jumped too many times during that game what did I say earlier and what was clearly stated the generation of miracles have not fully developed they're not grown men so their abilities if you try to span these abilities we see that the, the negative side effects with Kisei later on mm -hmm. it does damage to the body it breaks you you break down ladies and gentlemen you break down he couldn't jump just deal with it. he couldn't jump because he was burned out and yes if, if you see for example d way dwayne wade plays in miami uh superstar dwayne wade he gets blocks on centers all the time he gets blocks on everybody and he's like six three because it's about timing yes Kuroko can do it morosky bar doesn't really bend his legs you know what i'm saying he doesn't really jump anyway but he killed his legs. And so it doesn't matter if he's in the zone. If your body can't go, you can't go. I've played it. I've lived it. I've played to where my legs were cramped up. I played to where my body was cramped. I played to where I couldn't run. Just couldn't I couldn't go. Okay? That's very that's legit. That's not BS. But once again, if you don't know the game, you don't know. If you don't know B-ball, you don't know. 
But anyways, moving on. Keyson. Now, perfect cop. Okay. I, I will say this because I have a. Uh, I've had this conversation with Northside and, and other uh, individuals who are in the Kuroko. Uh, speak one, two, three. Shout out to y'all both for squad double zero. By the way. If oh, and also Dalton Schiller as well. He's a Kuroko fan. And uh, yeah, let me put that. Up. The copier can never surpass the originator. Now, people like, but the Yenica understand what I'm trying to say. The originator can always come up with something else if he's creative enough, which Aomini, for example, is. And Aomini's skill set is, is his, his uh, abilities are higher than Kisei. Kisei just compensates, even with perfect copy. And he combines, it's phenomenal. Don't get me wrong, I think it's obvious he can still evolve. And he can evolve time span or whatever. But it was for a very short period of time. At first it was five minutes and then he extended it. But you see the toll it took on his body, on his legs, on his knees. He couldn't go the next game against, for example, Midorima uh, in a consolation match. A consolation game. Okay. The, the, the semi-final, you know, uh, the, third, the third place, the bronze and medal game. Right? These abilities take the toll on the body if spammed. Okay? That... That is good. Unlike in other manga and stories where they're just, just use this anytime. Just use it any old time. No side effects. This actually has a side effect. Not only that, they had to sit out Kisei for much of the game because of this. Yes, he was unstoppable for a short period of time. But it's also not like his other teammates on, um, what, what the, uh, dang it, I forget the, uh, the name of the squad now. Of the high school, it's, it's been a while. I know Shutoku is is Midorima, but I forget the name of the squad. But anyways, his squad, uh, Kisei squad, Red Ryoto Kisei. It ain't like it ain't like they were were chumps either. They were good. They're very good. But Saren's better when Kisei's on the board, and you can clearly see that Saren's better because we saw what happened to Kisei squad without him against. Shutoku. And it wasn't just and Shutoku's legit without even Midorima. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not not plausible. It's not like it's not plausible for Sarin to win. Kagami going zone makes perfect sense. Oh Kagami spamming zone. No, it's not. You would think against the highest level competition, he would be the most focused and have the pencil. The, the, the potential to go into the zone and ladies and gentlemen he couldn't just go into that joke he had to figure out how he even had to be instructed uh, by Aomini I believe before the recruiting game what his secret to going in is and, and, and y'all act like Kuroko's not focused the killer eyes though I always talk about the killer eyes though you act like other players and all them players focus the, the, the level of intention in the game is so, so great. But people want to complain about the powers because they don't understand the abilities. But anyways, we move on to the Rakuza game. I expected some crazy, some OP hack stuff. Now, I remember they talked about the Uncrowned Kings. They were introduced right now. And I kept looking for it. And I'm like, okay, none's on your scene. None. And I'm like, no, don't tell me the other three. I, I think eventually figured out before the game. The other three are on Rakuzin, they're the Emperor. Like, ladies and gentlemen, they're the Emperor. They have a long history, long tradition of winning. This is how it works specifically in high school. College it does too, sometimes in uh, professional sports. But in high school, there were squads like this, there were teams built of powerhouse. I mean, you get the best players in, in the region, the district, the nation, whatever. They recruit. All these teams are being recruited. But yeah, man, Rakuza is the best of the best. And Saren had fought their way through the best. So why shouldn't they be able to compete with the best? This is factual that, that Akashi Seiju, the captain of the Generation of Miracles, yes, I have him as the best. I have Akashi, Aomini, and Nikisi at this point. 
roster ball and Mita Rim is clear. I didn't say he can't play defense, he's that good, but he's clearly the last. Roski Ball ain't, ain't on the level of these other three. Okay. Not yet. You know, it, 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 there. Even though Moroski Ball became the second one after Aomini to realize his abilities, he ain't on that level. He, he just, I mean, they're on the level. I'm saying is he ain't with these other cats. Um, I believe I have Kagami ahead of him. With this situation, uh, let, let's see. Kagami into the zone at the beginning of the game of the Full on full all out. And it's factual because plenty of people against highest level competition, the best athletes, it's it's been done time to time. I've entered the zone a few times. Even myself. Not the highest of highest levels of play, but I entered it. Okay. And in trying to describe the zone, that's a whole different discussion. Regardless. He entered the zone. And he, he lost the zone. Because they shut him down. And you had outside commentators from very credible sources of players, specifically glasses on To'o, or former To'o player. They were breaking it down. Aomini was breaking this junk down. And if you can't trust Aomini's world, I don't know what you, what you can trust in this series. Aomini, overall, is the best player. I'm not saying... Let me, let me see. As far as in skill set is concerned, Aomini is the best player. But when it comes to the most, at this point, dominant, when I say, how, how do I break this down the best? Skills wise, AOME is the best. But the best overall player is going to be uh, Akash. Let me just put that. The best skills player of uh, raw ability is AOME. Let me, let me clarify that. If you can't trust AOME, you can't trust Akash. I don't, I don't know who you can trust. You can't trust these coaches. You know what I'm saying? Some of these top tier coaches. But anyways, oh yeah, phenomenal coaches, well, I'm a cruiser. And Sarah was getting beat, and they got themselves into a hole. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever play sports, especially if, if you ever know professional sports, this happens plenty of times where the better team loses one game. Okay, I've seen, if you watch the NCAA tournament, uh, March Madness, I'm talking about basketball, you'll see sometimes the better team loses. It, it's just what it have is part of the nature of it. Why else compete? But the better team's always going to win. I, first of all, you have to be at a certain level, which Saren's at. Okay? Especially offensively, they can compete. So as long as they make the defensive stops and grab rebounds, they can win the game. It's not like they won by a great margin. They barely eked it out. But regardless, down the stretch, especially in the second half, first started with Akashi. Once Akashi started getting rattled, the, the point guard, the captain, the the the, pill, uh, the rock of the team, once he started rattling, the rest of the team started getting rattled. Okay? This is this is how it is in reality. That's how games go. And plenty of teams can come back and win the game. Even 25 down, I've seen it happen. I played in other other games where we greatly down and we came back and I've seen streaks of having it happen. Teams can drop ten points. You know, ten points can be going like that. Okay? Sam clawed their way back into the game. But they ain't like Rakuz and just laid over and count out. No, they kept fighting and it was a back and forth. But Sarah kept hammering and hammering and hammering because they had they also are an offensive juggernaut. They have the offensive firepower to do what they did. Okay? And so Kagami re-enters the zone, which, and also let me just put in the last play, or the final plays, he could only play offense. He didn't have enough juice, he didn't have enough stamina for defense. For those of you who think he got to replenish stamina, that's not factual. Once again, in the crowd, oh the crowd, man. look, the morale, the, the mo it's something called uh, momentum, the, 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 what's called the six man in basketball or the 12th man in football, the crowd plays a huge factor. You get the crowds back, and it can, that's why home court advantage a lot of times is such, that's why there's a term, home court advantage. It's not because it just calls, it's because the crowd uh, most is most effective there. Okay, it, it's a very psychological understanding. I mean, you saw a, uh, Akashi's breakdown. We saw his development of abilities. And his ability made sense as a point guard. He should have the most OP hacks ability. There's a reason he was a captain. There's a reason the Generation of Miracles and Kuroko all follow this cat. 
he calls, they come. Ayo, mini Morosky, bar. Come? Come on, dog. Ayo, mini of all people. Morosky, bar. They follow him. Because he's that dude. And he, his, his strategic mindset, his genius. He, him and Ayo, mini are the true geniuses, definitely, when it comes to the game. Kisei can be that can they be added to there. Okay, Kisei can be added to the list because of his 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 adaptation ability. But mainly Akashi and Aomine. When it comes to basketball, the basketball IQ. I'm not saying Midorima doesn't have a high basketball IQ, but I'm not talking about a basketball IQ. Pure and simple. Akashi and Aomine are pure geniuses. Okay, the pure geniuses. Kashi runs this team. Kagami. I mean, you had everyone on Saren going on. They had to use the bench. They practically cleared the bench. They were throwing guys into the fire who ain't really played all the That's real. That's reality. Okay? They used everything. Hugo came clutch. Kuroko had to go in. Kuroko came to another level. Everybody want to deny that. Kagami. He couldn't do it alone. He kept getting shut down. I mean, Kiyoshi had to go into reckless abandon to where he could do some possible permanent damage. I don't think it's permanent because he could come back next season. Well, I think he could come back international. But he, he sees it as his last game. So he's going all out the best he can. Remember, he's an uncrowned king. Okay? Yes, Hercule Mun. So as I mentioned, no Nobuya mentioned it. Uh, Mibuchi. And, and the foul that Mibuchi did. Now understand this. The irony is that he's the one who usually is the recipient of the four-point play. One of the top ten rules of defense in basketball is don't foul the jump shoot. But the thing is, Mabuchi is a shot-blocking shooting guard, shot-blocking guard, which is a blessing and a curse. Um, it has a lot of benefits. But the thing is, what they mentioned about instincts, he jumped in the air, and, and he was able to make contact and, and hit the shot. Now, if you watch pro basketball, uh, <laughs> Ray Allen has had this happen. As great a phenomenal shooter as Ray Allen has had, he's had it happen often. D. Wade, Dwayne Wade, has it happen a lot. Where he gets people in the air and he get and, and he creates the you know the contact is created. They hit him or he, he you know makes the contact and a foul happens. That's part of the game of basketball, okay? I've lived it, done it, had it happen to me. It's part of the game. You should know better. It's a rookie mistake, but you got to also remember he's a sophomore in high school. I think people forget about that. Even if professional athletes, pro players can do this, then a high, a, a high school definitely can. It doesn't matter what your skill set. If you're not mentally there, he knew it, but he reacted before he thought. Every other shooter in the, in, the, in the arena recognized it, but it's hard to be instincts when you're not thinking. You go back to bad habits, okay? And that's what happened there, okay? Um, and the whole team in the zone part two actually makes a lot of sense because if if you ever been in the zone, you ever played, uh, you know, or, or watched, I haven't. No, I've, I've played where individuals in the zone and we were pretty much playing on all cylinders. Uh, or not being in the zone, but when everybody was all on all cylinders, on all one quarter, on the same page, it's pretty much unstoppable. And Kagami entering and, and, and raising the level of the players to, to not their full capacity, but pretty damn near. I mean, Akashi was pretty much doing, you know, giving the perfect passes. So, it, it, it it's like a pseudo zone, but it, it, it's, it's kind of complicated. Okay, what Akashi and, and Kagami were doing, but it is based in reality. Once again, um, I've watched professional, you know, pro teams do it. Um, you at the Dream Team, the '92 Dream Team, U.S. U.S. Basketball. Go back and watch the '92 Dream Team, and they were firing. They were often firing all awesome. They would be team by four, okay, plus, and, and in a lot of cases, okay, average something like four. I mean, I've seen it. When everybody in different sports, when everybody, you know, 
a star player and it, it just raises it anywhere you just can't the defense and the pressure you to feel as the opposing team as the team that's down or the pressure that you give if you're on the team it's just like you, you can't like do any wrong you feel me and with that being said understand this and in the end of this video do not make it too long okay With the last second uh, thing, understand they had nothing left. Saren once again had nothing left in the tank. They knew they could not go to OT over time. They didn't have any stamina left, which debunks that whole notion that they had stamina. Regardless, it was a, a intensely missed foul shot. One of the most chaotic uh, portions of any basketball game. And a miss, not just a missed free throw, but an intentionally missed. They sent two rebounders, uh, Nebuya and, and, and Ubuji. Now, Kiyoshi had got rebounds throughout the game. Remember, he's a generation of miracles. He's the center of the generation. I mean, not the generation of miracles. He, he's an uncrowned king. He's the center of the uncrowned king. Now, nobody talks about it, but I was talking about I think it was no side. He reminded me, a uh, right of postponement is the most hacks. Forget perfect copy. Right of postponement is the most hacks ability in, in the series. You can't stop it. That's what Kiyoshi has. Yo, if he was healthy, remember he can play point guard and he can play center. He's just that beast. This dude, the freaking Vice Claw, had been grabbing rebounds over Herculean muscle all, like not all game, but much of the game. And Mabuchi's only a guard, he's a shooting guard. Doesn't matter that he's on current King. So the center of the Generation Miracle gets a rebound. He passes out to Kuroko. Akashi's the only one who reads it. Okay? It's chaos. First of all, you sent two rebounders. Neither of them got it. It means an open man. For those who don't understand how Kagami could possibly be open. But even so, Kagami is an ace for a reason. He's the ace of the team for a reason. He makes plays. He can get open even if he's marked. Their markings were all screwed up. He goes in. He goes in for a dunk. Remember, this was under five seconds. It was like 3.9 seconds. A couple passes. You know, a pass into an alley -oop. To an oop. Come on, y'all. If you understand the game of basketball, you understand all of what's going on. It should it shouldn't be difficult. But no, nah, people people again, they say, oh it's just fiction. You know, why is it, why is it, uh... Sorry, that one couldn't wait. Okay. That one couldn't wait. So overall, the winter cup phenomenal. Phenomenal. It, it really did. Uh, it was it was truly action packed, it was intense, it was enticing. I loved it. One thing, since to avoid this, these problems, people haven't, I now said this, have a, there needs to be a uh, next one come my suggestion, if, you know, long shot at best, um, that the, the, the manga, the manga could would see this, but I personally, I desire and even kind of predict that, uh, there needs to be a playoff system. Say the top eight teams make it, a, you know, the winner cup, and then the top eight teams do a, uh, best two out of three rounds, okay, that, that would be great. That, that really would be great for as far as the playoff system so you can avoid situations like this the better team uh, will pretty much win the playoffs okay not not the or the the more uh in tune team because not always the better team but the more in tune team the team that you know makes less mistakes and at the end of the day if Kuzi made more mistakes than Sarah that's why they lost the game when you have two nearly or evenly matched teams the team who makes the most of six loses. That's just how it works. I expect the one that like, comes subscribe. I know this was a long video, but I had to deal and debunk with a lot of a lot of myths and misunderstandings, misinterpretations of the manga of Kuroko no Basket. And until uh, next time, y'all. Until I'll see you in the Kuroko uh, chapter review or in other videos. Peace. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night.